BBC News, I'm John Shea. President Biden has stressed that support for Ukraine from the US and allies will not waver in a defiant speech in Poland delivered in the run-up to the first anniversary of Russia's full-scale invasion. He told a cheering crowd in Warsaw that President Putin's lust for power and land would fail. Sarah Smith reports from Warsaw. President Biden came to Warsaw to talk not just to the Polish people, but to all the NATO allies who are supporting Ukraine, to implore them to stick with their commitment to defend democracy and freedom, no matter how long this conflict lasts. He rejected Vladimir Putin's assertion that the US provoked this war, condemned what he described as war crimes and atrocities committed by Russia, and declared that Moscow will never be victorious in Ukraine. Mr. Biden sees the war as a fundamental battle of values that will shape the world for decades to come. He needs his allies to be equally committed if he is to prevail. The NATO chief has accused President Putin of making the world more dangerous after he announced that Russia would suspend its participation in its only remaining nuclear arms control agreement with Washington. Jens Stoltenberg urged Moscow to reconsider a decision which he said dismantled the whole architecture of arms control. Later, the Russian foreign ministry said Moscow would continue to observe the New START treaty stipulations which limit deployed nuclear warheads. President Zelensky has dismissed criticism from the veteran Italian politician Silvio Berlusconi during a visit to Kiev by the Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni. Mr Berlusconi is a junior coalition partner of Ms Meloni and a long-standing friend of President Putin. Earlier this month he said he wouldn't want to meet Mr Zelensky, whom he blamed for the war. Mr Zelensky said Mr Berlusconi hadn't had his house bombed daily, as he put it, by brotherly Russia. Ms Meloni has stressed her government's support for Ukraine. A New York court has found Mexico's former security chief guilty of taking bribes in return for allowing safe passage for drugs. Prosecutors said Hanara Garcia Luna was secretly taking millions of dollars from the country's biggest crime group, the Sinaloa Drug Cartel. Here's Nada Taufik. He was once the highest ranking law enforcement official in Mexico, and he was trusted by the former president, Felipe Calderon. He was a top partner, really, for U.S. officials in the DEA and FBI. But what we heard through this trial, and it has to be said, it was mainly through the testimony of cartel members who have been convicted of their own drug crimes. We heard how he essentially allowed the Sinaloa cartel to become a global cocaine empire by passing on to them sensitive law enforcement investigations at one point even giving them federal police officer uniforms and escorts world news from the bbc the biden administration has issued draft proposals that would make it harder for migrants to claim asylum once current covid related border controls are lifted in may the plan would oblige adult asylum seekers to use an app to book an appointment with U.S. officials or first claim asylum in another country before entering the United States. Failure to comply would make migrants ineligible if they subsequently reach the border. The U.S. Supreme Court has been hearing arguments in a case that could weaken legal protections enjoyed by social media giants. The judges are considering an appeal by the family of an American student who died in the 2015 Islamist attacks in Paris. From Washington, here's Nomia Iqbal. At the heart of the Nomi Gonzalez family case is their claim that YouTube, via its computer algorithms, unlawfully recommended videos to certain users by the terrorist group. They want YouTube's owner, Google, to take responsibility. But since 1996, online platforms have been protected by a specific section of the Communications Decency Act. Big tech lobbyists say if this is weakened, social media and online marketplaces could be open to costly litigation, which could also lead to tight censorship of who is allowed to post online. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has denounced a UN call to pause his administration's judicial reform plans as an absurdity. His comments came after the UN human rights chief, Volker Turk, urged Israel's far-right-backed government to reflect on the plans and to consider wider debate amid widespread public concern. Simone Seguin, one of France's last surviving women resistance fighters, has died at the age of 97. She joined the French resistance in 1944 when she was 18. Her image was made famous when photographs of her carrying a machine pistol behind a group of German prisoners near Chartres were published in the American press. And that's the latest BBC World News.